Hormones, acne, aching joints. High school is a challenging, tumultuous time for even the hardiest and most prepared of teenagers. Indeed, everyone's been through that slog, so it's easy to relate when we play games that delve into that setting. One of the most recent games to take us back to the greatest, or worst, time of our lives is a little indie title known as Super Daryl Deluxe. Developed and published by Dan and Gary Games, Super Daryl Deluxe is a brawler metroidvania with RPG aspects. If that's confusing, you're forgiven. The game has a lot going on. The artist and programmer duo's first game, Super Daryl Deluxe, saw release in April 2018 after a successful Kickstarter that raised a little over the $7,000 asking price. After a roughly four-year development cycle, how did the game turn out? Open your textbooks to page beef. Our learning journey begins with this review of... Super Daryl Deluxe. First time players of Super Daryl Deluxe will find that the gameplay is defined by two major things, its combat and its platforming. The combat in the game plays out very much like the 2D brawlers of yesteryear, if it was completely relegated to a 2D plane. With its many different techniques and abilities, it's a fascinating what if that shows you what Super Metroid would have been like if the protagonist was a very imaginative Napoleon Dynamite and Zebes was a high school. The game's platforming is astounding in its simplicity. If you jump while not running, you'll get a higher jump. While running, you get a longer jump. Mixing these two up is crucial to traversing the game's terrain, which can sometimes be a bit of a challenge to tackle the first time around since sometimes it's tough to tell what's solid terrain and what isn't. Luckily, if it looks like solid terrain, it usually is, which leaves out a lot of the guesswork beyond what sort of jump you need to reach it. The combat is fairly engaging as well, with mobs of constantly respawning enemies begging to be defeated. Daryl has a plethora of great combat techniques at his disposal, and while you can learn and use whatever you like during the game, I've noticed that some attacks have a sort of synergy that makes them work well together. Experimenting with these is key to success. For example, early in the game, I used a simple combo attack into a launcher where I could use more combo attacks or fire projectiles at enemies. It was powerful and effective, allowing me to dispatch most targets with ease. This kind of variety is a welcome change from most 2D brawlers, where the only options are to punch, kick, jump, and grapple. You unlock Daryl's techniques either as bonuses for doing side quests, or by spending textbooks you earn or find as you play throughout the game. You can then upgrade these techniques with SXP, short for skill experience points, that you earn at the same rate as normal XP that Daryl uses to level up. It's very easy to wind up with a stack of textbooks and loads of skill experience points if you get distracted or lost while doing side quests, and I suspect the developers intended for that to happen to be properly prepared for each new area you walk into. The game's many enemies are great, and each poses a new and interesting challenge, though most of that challenge comes from dealing with them as they layer over each other and attack you all at once. This sort of variety helps to hold my interest in the game and encourages me to continue so I can see what sort of zany creatures will show up next. Daryl's peers have a similar variety. No two of his classmates are the same. Each have their own personality and, when you find their codes, a hallway locker to loot. The game's writing is also witty and top-notch, and it adds emphasis to the game's plot. Most people treat Daryl like he's this weird, silent teenager, or attempt to manipulate him or take advantage of his kindness, and the game supports this dialogue by giving him numerous quests. Meanwhile, the game's journal insists that Daryl is popular and cool, telling the story of a teenager oblivious to the apathy and disingenuousness of his peers, as well as his own overactive imagination and delusions of grandeur. As a player, you understand these things, but Daryl doesn't, so you can't help but pity him a little as you enjoy his story. Speaking of the journal, it's one of the game's best and most endearing features. Often when you receive a story quest, the dialogue can be very vague. Luckily, the journal is not, often giving you a much better idea of where you need to go and what's expected of you. It also does an excellent job of informing you where you left off if you step away from the game for an extended period. The way it explains the events of the game from Daryl's point of view in contrast to the overarching narrative really helps you understand Daryl as a protagonist. The journal is one of those things that I regret not referencing more often since I tend to find myself directionless until I remember to look at it, and the entries gave me a chuckle more often than not. Graphically, Super Daryl Deluxe stands out despite its dull colors. 
This sort of drab color scheme does two important things. One, it conveys the overall narrative of the game, and two, it helps you keep track of Daryl, who wears a bright red in stark contrast to the dull world around him. In this way, the game's dreary backgrounds also let you keep track of what's an enemy. Anything that isn't colored white or gray tends to be hostile. The art style is very interesting, and most of the time has a great attention to detail. The soundtrack is also magnificent, with unique tracks for every zone. Some tracks are truly standout, helping to define the game. As a result, the gameplay, artwork, and soundtrack all blend together as a trifecta to create a solid game. Of course, not even a game like Super Daryl Deluxe can escape its share of controversy. For example, several of the bosses have extended periods of invulnerability where you must avoid attacks for a long period of time. This isn't normally a big deal, but bosses also seem to soak up your damage with a large health pool and then get faster, stronger, or more difficult as the fight winds on, and you'll find yourself repeating the same boss fight several times over trying to learn boss patterns or, worse, get lucky. The bosses also have unexciting pattern-based gameplay, acting more like a Mega Man boss fight with long, frustrating periods of invincibility than anything deserving of a 2D brawler. There are some exceptions to the rule here, like the janitor boxing match, which is an amusing tug-of-war style fight that demands you avoid high and low attacks to push your opponent back to his corner. However, these seem to be few and far between. Because bosses tend to be challenging, you might consider grinding to make the task easier. This is possible because the enemies endlessly respawn and tend to stack on top of each other, which makes them easier to kill in groups with the right techniques. The developers clearly anticipated this, making the XP gap between levels difficult to surmount quickly and easily without tackling the game's many, many side quests in addition to fighting enemies. With levels so hard to come by, upgrading to stronger, better quality techniques takes a while since each new tier of technique is gated by a level requirement. It's not uncommon to acquire new techniques from side quests and find that you can't use it for another several levels. The game's equipment has a similar problem. If the gear gained from side quests didn't have the level cap, it would make them much more rewarding and encourage you to do them for their rewards while also assisting you in tackling the zone's enemies. On the topic of side quests, almost all of them are fetch quests in some capacity. The main story quests also have this issue, but at least most of them only require you to go from point A to point B, then talk to someone or traverse the zone. The lack of variety in quests doesn't necessarily hurt the game since the focus is the narrative, but it sure doesn't help the game either. Side quests seem to only serve to pad out the game, but at least supplements your grinding since most items must be obtained from defeated enemies anyway. A decreased XP cost between levels and fewer side quests with more XP as rewards would have likely made for a smoother experience. As for the game's many and varied zones, there's a major issue in that they're either delightfully themed and a treat for the eyes, or they're completely unremarkable. There's no middle ground in Super Daryl Deluxe, which is unfortunate since there's a lot of potential that I feel is wasted here. In many cases, this unexceptional theming fits the story's narrative. Reality is a dull, boring place, and your imagination should be this anomalous and fascinating place to escape to. This is clearly what the developers were intending with the game, but sometimes it just falls flat. As for the game's music, many of the tracks are fantastic and do an excellent job complementing the game. Some tracks, however, tend to get very obnoxious over long play times. The most notable early game example of the soundtrack working against the game is when you enter the theater zone. The track is a sort of trap, sort of techno music remix of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Movement 2. The first few times you hear it sounds great, but you spend a lot of time in this area and likely revisit it in the future, so the music quickly begins to grate on your eardrums. If they had done a similar remix to at least one or two other symphonies and played them randomly, it would have fit the area a little bit better. Finally, one of the things that irritated me about the game was that textbooks and other goodies were often locked behind walls that required specific technique requirements to get past and obtain. This is clearly done to encourage you to unlock and play with a variety of abilities, but I just wanted to focus on my favorites. If the ones I chose to use the most didn't get me past when I first encountered it, I wasn't inclined to go back later since usually it was just one or two textbooks and just missing a few had no real effect on my game experience. 
for completionists, this will probably be the game's most frustrating aspect, requiring repeat visits to old zones and a lot of grinding just to get them. What's most irritating about this is that the developers clearly knew how to work secrets and rewards into the stage design because the entirety of the pyramid section of the game does it extremely well. Yet, they failed to do this anywhere else in the game, which adds up to more wasted potential. I just rarely felt rewarded for exploring, but the pyramid was a breath of fresh air, encouraging me to thoroughly check every nook and cranny. Super Daryl Deluxe is a game that coasts on its great artwork, solid soundtrack, and the contrast of its dual narratives, but is marred by repetitive combat, myriad fetch quests, and its few poor ideas. It's been a while since I've experienced a game that plays center field like that, with pros that just manage to outweigh the cons. Due to the fact that this game seems like it'll be getting very little attention in spite of its high praise, it's likely the game will, sadly, be overlooked by the average player. Luckily, it's bound to join the upper echelon of cult classic games in the company of titles such as Psychonauts, Earthbound, and Killer7. Considering that there are worse places for a game to wind up, like the bargain bin at your local Best Buy, the developers are probably pleased that their game will make cult classic video game lists for years to come. Super Nero Deluxe is currently $20 on Steam as of this video, and I recommend it to anyone who likes a narrative experience with their action RPG slash brawler. It may also appeal to those of you who are video game hipsters, wanting to experience more obscure games than not everyone has played. It's the end of the journey, fellas. If you want more Chunky Beef in the future, remember to subscribe to me here on YouTube, or follow me on social media to be informed when new videos drop. Thanks for watching, see you real soon.